Discovered by accident in 1982, the Windover site is a burial place of early Native Americans who inhabited this region 7,000 to 8,000 years ago. The burials were places underwater in the peat of the shallow pond. This peat helped to preserve the normally perishable artifacts and human tissues. The site contains the largest skeletal sample in the New World and the oldest bottled gourd found north of Mexico, two features that add to its significance. It also includes the largest and most complex sample of early textiles in the New World, a pollen record from the end of the Pleistocene to recent eras and the recovery of some of the oldest DNA from brain tissue and bone. The remarkable state of preservation has allowed archaeologists to reconstruct some of the earliest New World diets based on contents from their stomachs and on scientific analysis. The site has produced the largest and most complex textile collection ever recovered from an early archaic period site. It also yielded a remarkable organic artifact inventory, including wood and fibers. Archaeologists from Florida State University were among those who explored the Windover site. Professor Doran thought he could detect tiny fibers. And you could see it. It was a piece of seven plus thousand year old twine. It was, in a sense, as good as the day it was manufactured. You could see the twist and it was obvious. This was hand woven fabric. If Doran's hunch was right, and these mystery fibers were the remains of a textile, then this would send shock waves through the scientific community. These threads would be the oldest fabric of any importance in America and the only surviving proof that such ancient people could weave. Dr. Joe Lorenz of the Coriel Institute in Camden, New Jersey, is performing brand new analysis of the brain DNA, using techniques no one had access to back in the 1980s. Lorenz is re-examining sections of DNA called haplogroups in the brains of five Windover people. He's looking for haplogroups found only in native North Americans, because finding them would corroborate all previous work. In contrast to all previous findings, Lorenz couldn't confirm the Windover people were Americans. Further investigation revealed something even more remarkable. I went back to the screen and I looked at the sequences again. The first person's DNA, it looked European. When I looked at the second one, it looked European. When I looked at the third, fourth, and fifth, they were slightly different from the first two, but they looked European. Lorenz had found DNA unlike any other from Native Americans. Most scientists believe that some 15,000 years ago, people walked from Asia across the landmass now covered by the Bering Straits into North America. Lorenz's results could be consistent with a new and controversial theory that proposes some of the earliest people migrated to America from Europe, perhaps by crossing an Atlantic Ocean significantly narrower than it is today. If our genetic analysis shows that these individuals really do belong to a new and previously unidentified lineage, founding lineage in the New World, it would be very big news. So the race is on to find the final proof. But for the moment, Lorenz's work has added to the mounting evidence of an early European migration. The human remains uncovered at the Windover site were between seven and 8,000 years old, making them 3,200 years older than King Tut and 2,000 years older than the accepted dating of the Great Pyramids of Egypt. The deceased were wrapped in what archeologists believe is the oldest existing woven fabric in the world. Nearly 200 separate intact burials 
were excavated at the Windover site. With only a couple of exceptions, these bodies had been ritualistically buried and placed in the same fetal position, lying on the left sides. Their heads were pointed west, with their faces to the north. The damaged and diseased condition of some of the bones indicated that the incapacitated people of this tribe were cared for over long periods of time, even though they could not participate in activities essential to survival of the group, such as hunting and fishing. That said, the Windover site may not be that unique to the New World. A, a mummy three times older than King Tut has been discovered in the Nevada desert. It was found in 1940, about 12 miles east of the town of Fallon. It's a discovery that could possibly unlock some of humankind's early mysteries. But tonight on Special Assignment, Channel 3's Vince Sterla tells us scientists may never get a chance to unlock those mysteries. Outside of Fallon, Nevada, the curious have come to learn more about an ancient society of people who once called this cave home. Not far from this cave, a mummy has been discovered. A mummy that may reveal the secrets of an even older society. One that dates back to the dawn of civilization. This is extremely significant. This is unprecedented. We haven't had a find of this importance in my lifetime. One thing that makes the mummy, known as the spirit cave man, so important are these fine hand-woven fabrics discovered at the burial site. These textiles represent a, an extremely sophisticated ability to weave fabric by hand in a time where we didn't realize that people were doing that before. The mummy was discovered tightly bound up in this matting. Out of respect for the dead, this photograph and this drawing are the only two pictures scientists will allow to be publicly displayed. Recent tests reveal that the mummy is 9,000 years old. That's three times older than any other mummy yet discovered in North America. That news has stunned archaeologists because a mummy can tell scientists how people back then lived, what diseases they had, even what food they ate. Scientists can get that information by studying the mummy's DNA. That requires cutting a small piece of tissue from the body. And it shouldn't be done. And that, says Paiute Shoshone tribal leader Alvin Moyles, is desecrating the dead. The mummy was discovered near Paiute Shoshone land, but scientists claim that the mummy is so old that he couldn't possibly be related to the Paiute Shoshones, that the mummy's tribe was here thousands and thousands of years before anybody else. They do not appear similar to any living Native American in North America. They have receding cheekbones, narrow face, long face. Some, some Indians have some of those traits, but as a group, those are Caucasoid traits. The two sides are now caught in a catch-22. One way to prove kinship is through the DNA test. But the tribe doesn't want that because it would require further disturbance of the remains. Whether or not scientists ever get to study the mummy is a matter for the U.S. government's Bureau of Land Management to decide. The DNA evidence would be definitive. Until a decision can be made, the mysterious spirit cave mummy will remain trapped in limbo. Yeah, he's kind of in the legal, spiritual, ethical limbo. In Carson City, Nevada, Vince Sterla, Channel 3 reports. Even mummies can't avoid the law and bureaucracy, it appears. Many archaeologists agree it's entirely possible the mummy is not related to any existing tribe in North America. Yeah, it sounds like uh, the mummy predated most of the Indian tribes from sounds that part My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an independent anthropologist. I appreciate your support by subscribing and for sharing these videos. Thank you for the wonderful comments and to those that have made a donation to Atlantean Gardens, the nonprofit organization that publishes my books available on Amazon.com. Thank you to those that have made a contribution. It is very much appreciated. Be well. Until next time.